I'm trying to forget. I think All right. Actually more so we are back live, I think. Uh, <laughs> Who knows? Let's let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, it says standby starting soon still. Um, oh, my thing is still refreshing. I, I don't even know if we'll actually. No, it's still standby. Uselessness of the week. <laughs> the uselessness of the week is, is our attempt at doing a show. Yes, exactly. Yeah, Hang it on. looks. It looks like it's not working. Hold uh, on one sec. It says that we're live now. Yes. Yeah, I know it says we're live, but I went to the video and oh, we, we are, are live. We are live. We are live. Oh, yeah. Do we have a new video we're looking at. Yeah, do we yeah. have a new link. The Western new link. It's in the chat. It's in the chat box. All right, sorry, fellas or people, uh, everyone who's watching the second hangout, 53 and a half episode of the weekly. Uh, we had some technical <laughs> issues with Google, and our hangout is still going on. The first one, currently at the moment. And please don't watch that. Just watch this one. So anyway, uh, we're talking about oh, Microsoft. Oh, it got me screaming. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we uh, we're watching what Microsoft. We're talking about Microsoft uh, Health Backwards. and uh, Microsoft uh, Band. Uh, any thoughts on it, um, Sam? Since uh, since you're the last person to chime in here. It's actually interesting. I like to talk this up on platform. Microsoft. I, I don't think the band itself is what Microsoft is going for. I think it's actually the um, the platform, you know, because this is tied into um, health vaults as well. And we've used health vaults as just a way of getting, you know, all your other apps and all your other health applications onto the cloud. And uh, it looks as though also the new health app is also using, you know, it's very cloud heavy. So um, I think Microsoft is making a big push for, um, you know, for that, you know, uh, quantified lifestyle. Um, data um, crap. So they're the, that's pretty interesting. They're the first company to say the software needs to work first, the service needs to be there first. Well, no, they're not, they're not the first company. Um, I feel like they are. Fitbit. Fitbit has always had an open platform to where almost any you know other app out there could actually use their data. Um, they've, been, they've been doing that for quite a while. Um, I actually think my Fitbit and Helpful used to work together before. I've had Fitbit, Fitbit working with my widening scale, so that's been out there for quite some time. And I think the data, it's really beautiful when you can go to one place and look at all your data. You can see, you can look at the metrics of how much weight you're dropping versus, you know, your activity, um, your activity points, I would say. So um, at the end of the day, it gives you, as an individual, a lot more information to go out there and make informed decision about your health. But Microsoft being as big as it is, you can only imagine that kind the kind, the kind of data we'd be able to access as uh, just exponentially exploding. If they can get Fitbit on board, if they can basically be on multiple different devices, I, I think they have a really good idea. I don't know how well it's going to work out. It, I, I, see, I, I think I think it already has because has. yeah, because Fitbit's already have you, on board. Have you tried using the, the, the app right now? Yeah, I, without I'm, the band. I'm saying without the band. Well, I don't have anything else to use it with. I don't have a yeah, Fitbit. Yeah, but the thing is, if I can't even um, set up the app without having the band. The band, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean that that's that's the first so, that's the I mean, first part. Work, yeah, but yeah, it, but but it's an interesting concept. It's no. The reason why I say it, uh, with, I know with Fitbit you have to link it at their website. That's what they say. From that's what Fitbit says. So that's. I mean, it's still the it's still the growing pains of setting that up. But the fact that Fit, I think the fact that Fitbit already joined up off the bat to me is the biggest announcement because when you have a company who is one of the leaders in fitness and everybody's like, oh, you know, get a Fitbit, and Fitbit is already saying yes. Uh, we are going to at least use this platform. That means that either one, Microsoft paid them a lot of money, or two, Fitbit also just thinks that this is just beneficial for them because in the long run, Microsoft can handle software better than they can any day of the well, week. Are they saying they're exclusively going to use this software as opposed to using their own software? No, no, the, the, no it's going to be linking your, your yeah, software. They yeah. do that already. They do that with multiple devices. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 know, I know they do that, but I'm saying that the fact that they, they didn't waste time. You know, most companies will tell you wait and see. They don't have mm -hmm. to. There has to be some kind of deal there between Microsoft. Yeah. I mean, they, they, pr they probably might be a deal, but again, it, to me, it, I think it just shows that at least they have the biggest health person in there off the bat, and that can easily attract more people. But also, again, it also, uh, to me, I think for consumers going down the line, you're going to look at it and say, you know, if I can download Microsoft 
of just sounds much easier sell to consumer than to say I must have to have actually have to have a Fitbit app. And especially if you change, the best part is if you change from a Fitbit to something else. I think the most beneficial part. A Fitbit will always be with Fitbit, but when you change from a Fitbit to say a I was mentioning Toshiba before, so Toshiba band, your data from Fitbit is already there and shows that your progression and you don't lose your progression. That's the most important part that That's Fitbit, good. nobody else can pro provide, at least at this point in time. There, uh, until, some until question about does. there as to how it's going to do translations from a, you know, from a user, or should I say from a device specific like Fitbit's um, fuel band or Fitbit's, I'm sorry, charge um, now. Um, or Fitbit Search or whatever other Fitbit band you're using versus like a Nike Fuel. How does it bring all those numbers together? Like, I, you know, I posted earlier on, like, on our, on our chat how the Nike S Health is telling me I have 11,600 steps, whereas I'm a thousand, there's a thousand difference between that and what Google Fit is telling me. So, how do you marry all those? There's, there's definitely questions about it that needs to answer, but after it's on, a, on one platform, Yes, I definitely get that. I think that's the, that's the direction we all need to go in. Well, I mean, well first of all, Nike Fuel Band is Apple Fuel Band number one. Number two, <laughs> Nike Fuel Band is not accurate. I'm sorry, I don't care. No, no, but I'm talking about I, I, right it, now. It's, the it's, same device. It's a, it's the same device. But I think, I think also again, when you put it that you know a device doesn't have GPS tracking, also limits on you know what it does. So that actually will skew things a different way, like yeah. compared to this, the band, or say the the surge, other things like that. So I think you will find that, um, yeah, it will try and fix the discrepancies, but, you know. Yeah. Now, how would it do that? It's what, what I'm actually, because it's all in the cloud, so it really can do a lot of data management before it gets to your device. So it's be interesting to see how it does that. That is very true. All right, moving on to the next topic, if I can remember what the next topic is, since, you know, we're going through so much technical difficulties. <laughs> yes, uh, constant C. Yeah, we all know what constant C is, right? No, currency. Yes. Oh, is it currency? I, sorry, no. I, just, yeah. See, yeah, I call it constancy. Constancy sounds like way well, more big brothery than whatever. Yeah, okay, yeah. currency, sorry. I see, I, 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 there we go. That's my dyslexic mind. Completely. That's the consortium with CVS, Best Buy, Rite Aid, uh, who else? Walgreens, right? Walmart as well. And Walmart, yeah, who have teamed up to shut down mobile payments. Oh, ah. <laughs> what they're doing. So your, your thoughts, guys, your, uh, your thoughts. So with you, uh, Sam. Well, it's, it's an obvious play for user data. That's really what it is. Um, currency was set up by this what, MCX consortium. And who runs the MCX consortium? Walmart. It's Wally World. So um, yeah, it's, a, it's an obvious play to where these retailers are telling Google and um, Apple right now that you can't come into our sandbox. Basically, think about it. Right now, when the, when you purchase something using Visa MasterCard, these companies are paying anywhere between two to four percent on you know fees on that transaction. The data which they're the data which you know the Visa gets is something that they're not you know very they don't have easy access to. So you come up with something like currency. What does it do? Currency now becomes your way of bypassing Visa and MasterCard, your way of getting that direct data from your system. So you can now tell exactly, hey, how many people are buying X amount of things and spending X amount of dollars in certain neighborhoods? How can I use this data to basically drive them to spend more on other things? So they want to own your data. They want to own that sandbox. And with Google and Apple coming in and trying to say, hey, guess what? Users want to use our particular you know, um, technology so that we have all that information and then we can now sell it back to you. Nah, Walmart's going to say no. I don't see a way where currency goes away. Maybe currency becomes licensed somehow by Google and Apple, but nah, it's not going away. It's, it's here to stay. And I think it's a, it's a, it's a legitimate and logical play to what Google and Apple are trying to do. Um, uh, Juan? I mean, I don't disagree. Uh, every, everyone's, after you sort of have a proof of concept, everyone then rushes into the market to try and put their own spin on it. I think what's frustrating is the fact that these, this consortium has the ability to block competition. And this is the same thing that's been holding mobile payments back from the developer side, where 
uh, the carriers were able to block Google Wallet because they were trying to put out ISIS, which is now SoftCard because you shouldn't name anything ISIS these days. Uh, <laughs> and and so we, we keep seeing players like Google and Apple trying to walk into this space, getting stopped by other companies that have more clout in the consumer uh, uh, payments market, be it the carriers or the actual retailers themselves. Uh, I'm not I'm not impressed with what the retailers have come up with, especially in terms of their uh, their stance on things like fraud protection, which it doesn't seem like currency is going to be walking out the door with any significant fraud protection. Uh, you're sort of uh, it's uh, sort of up to you to police your own account, and especially after what we've seen user data getting hacked and stolen from retailers, it doesn't give me any confidence that they're going to be able to protect our accounts to any degree or be able to reimburse if there is fraud detected on our accounts. So compared to services that just use your credit card data, I can still call my credit card company in, in, in a much easier fashion and say, hey, you know, like something happened or my credit card got stolen, we need to reverse these charges. Um, I have better tools. I don't love doing business with banks and credit card companies, but they've got an infrastructure that's much better designed to protect me. And out of all of them, if I'm going to trust user data, even after the iCloud break, I'm still more willing to trust my user data with Apple than I am with Walmart. So, uh, yeah, I mean, we're just watching another example of uh, a market which is going to take even longer for consumers to get some sort of usable system in place because everyone thinks they can reinvent the wheel. And uh, we're not going to run with one standard. We're going to have 20 standards, and it's becoming a bad XKCD comic. Uh, how about you, Warren? But... This is by far one of the most useless things I've ever seen. This currency thing. This, this is. I understand a strategic play, but in the end of the day, it's all about. I want to block this person out to block this person out to not have to pay this person to screw this company over, so I can get the data from over here to over there. It's just. A, it's a. It's a fight for user data. That's essentially what it turns into, and everybody's trying to get their bit and trying to block someone else out from getting that same data. This. I'm sorry. There should be no difference between the NFC payment should be handled in the same way that credit card companies handle the the credit uh, the uh, the MasterCard, the Visa, the American Express and Discover. You should just have the logo on the outside and let, and let the consumer decide which one is going to be the one they prefer to use. I don't see why there has to be a block of any kind. They all use the same technology. They all use the same it's all the same NFC based stuff. They all have a different ways about the security, but why can't we allow the consumer to just decide if I see the currency logo, I see a Google Wall logo, and I see an Apple Pay logo, and soft card. Why can't I choose which one I want to use at any location I want to use it at, rather than being forced to, to, to say that, well, you used to use Google Wall here at 7-Eleven, but because we're part of this company, we have to block that out now, and now you're forced to use this type of payment here. That, to me, is just stifling innovation, stifling progress, blocking people out over bullshit reasons, and it's going to be one of those things that, unfortunately, the government's going to have to get involved and go, hey, guys, screw all of you. We're doing it this way and have to make fair competition because these companies won't make fair competition between each other because they fight like little five-year-olds. So I, as far as I'm concerned, NFC, like I've told you, NFC payments are dead until the government decides to get involved in some way to make it even, even though I don't think they should be a government involved, they should be grown enough to realize that how about we just let the market decide which one of these are going to be better. Everybody gets to date and we just see what happens. But that's not the name of the game these days. If I have enough money, I'm just going to try to block you out. If I have enough cloud, I'm just going to block you out. Because well, well, you, well you, do say, you say a good point there, but the thing is like going back to what Warren, and I'm sorry, Sam says is that it's, like you said, it's about data, but the thing is that Apple wants to sell it. And, you know, it, it's the same thing going back to Facebook and the reason why Google built Google uh, Plus because, you know, they did not want to buy from Facebook. And, you know, that's that's the only reason why. And that's the, that's the problem we face here is that uh, because of, of the market we have is that uh, everyone is going to try and create their own and do their thing. And, you know, if, if uh, you can't fault them because if that's what they want to do, that's what, I mean, that's just how the market works. Yeah. And I agree with you. The government probably has to step in and say, Oh, they're going to. You they know, come, at, some, at some point. Second, let's do it. second some big money, money, big money senator can't use his Apple Pay 
to pay for something at some event, boom. That's all it's going to take. Yeah. That was the same thing when these, when these, remember, remember how all the cell phone contracts changed? Guess when that happened? When some, when, when somebody in, in Congress couldn't change their iPhone out for the new one without paying seventy hundred dollars to do it. <laughs> then all of a sudden, change, change starts to happen. That's yeah. when this is going to start to change. I mean, I think this, this conversation is a little different because we're not talking about a difference in technology. We're talking more about a difference in protocol. You know, a different in code. <laughs> There's, so, a, there's no difference between this and a, than, than when they had Visa, Mastercard logos are sitting on. No, on, no, no. See, you make you make you make you make difference between that. See, you make you make a different a different different case because also the same thing applies here is that Visa, Master, and all those guys came together and made their own consortium that says you have to pay us as a merchandiser to you. So basically, that's every time. That's why you still have some stores that say. I don't. I don't accept credit cards because I'm paying. You know, that's why you have all those places that do cash. So it's the same thing. It happens. I mean, there's almost no way around well, it because fees, the fees dropped dramatically. Uh, yeah, the, the fees have dropped because you but know they, most they, of the most of, Visa and Mastercard. Truthfully, Visa and Mastercard and even Discover aren't the problems because they while they do charge, there is a state they understand that they have to base their chargers based upon volume. Not American Express, so that's why there's like the generally speaking, American Express doesn't get accepted everywhere. That's yeah, no, but but the, it's not like five American, or six bucks but it's not just price. American Express. I'm saying that that's a, like you still have stores people just say no, no cash, or even no cash at, at a certain limit. They're like, I mean, I'm seeing no yeah. card, well, and especially like at food yeah. trucks and stuff like that too. It's yeah, like, uh, yeah, you need to spend more than five dollars. Exactly. If you, you want to do, you know, but a 10, lot of food trucks bucks. also use Square, which also charges a lot less. Right. Less, yeah. So, but but that's see, and that's and that's that's the point here. Yeah, it actually brings us to our next topic, which we can still tie in, is uh, the guy who basically invented Google Wallet. Created Google Wallet is coming out with something else called um, I can't pronounce it right now. Can anybody help me out with Point? Point, yeah. yeah. Point payment system, which is an all-in-one payment system that will work well for merchandisers. You know, it go, it uses, it can use NFC, it can use a card. Uh, um, let me actually share a, a photo yeah. of this thing so that people can actually NFC, see. Bluetooth, QR, high bar, uh, barcode camera, and a hybrid EMV MSR card reader. So yeah, exactly the um, chip and pin. Pin, yeah. So, so this thing is an all-in-one. It's it's a great tool, especially with with this kind of fight you're having here, where for smaller for smaller retailers, you know, people who are either have like smaller mom and pop shops and things like that, Trust. this will work with your old register as well as will work as a standalone register on it too. And it's what it's like one ninety nine. Or something like no, that. Uh, for merch, uh, it's, I think it's uh, two ninety nine for two ninety nine. Sorry, two ninety nine. Developer the four ninety nine. Yeah. So, What's the fees on it though? Um, do they have? Do they I, have I don't think the fees? Gonna be, he's going to be charging the fee. I don't, I yeah, I don't think he's looking at fees. He's he's looking at trying to bring a, a whole different you know scope so that Death every that. everyone can everyone can have payments. It doesn't matter. So like even if Apple Pay doesn't work, you don't have to necessarily retrofit anything. You know, you almost have everything in one, and um, I, I heard it's like upgradable to a certain degree. So, That's to me, I think this is a nice, at least, it's a nice ploy away from all this rubbish we're hearing about different, you know, payment systems and, and stuff like that. Any uh, thoughts, Juan? Well, the, oh, sorry, I'll take called Juan. Oh no, I'm, I'm, I'm actually looking through the the point thing right now. I, I meant to look at it last night. I I, I think, I mean, because the the idea is cool. It just depends on what kind of support you're going to get. Um from other partners. So, I mean, like, you know, Warren's question of what are the fees going to be, I mean, so you still at some point need to pay for yeah, credit yeah. card transactions. Credit card fees, yes, yeah, definitely. The, those are the but, ones you do. But, I mean, it's 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 a brilliant-looking piece of hardware. kind of looks like, a you know, an iPad with a, a little a printer tape attachment stuck on the back. Yeah. But so not... The- uh, I, I, I think if we can start seeing more things like that coming to retailers, then it would give consumers a lot more confidence in actually using these systems because we've been used to. I mean, it's kind of a culture shock when you even just go to like Canada. In Canada, they use very different credit card terminals than than we do, and they're uh, probably a generation ahead of us in terms of different types of mobile payments. So uh, th- this is the kind of thing that I think would make consumers feel a little bit more comfortable in in using some of these new technologies because it looks like new technology. It's just whether or not it get, catches any momentum in the marketplace is the problem. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I understand the momentum marketplace argument. I think, uh, for me, what is what I like about it is the fact that uh, 
you know, if you're looking to upgrade, uh, say your, you know, like as as a smaller business, this is probably the best thing because it covers everything, and it, you know, so you don't have to bother about, you know, like you know how you, especially small businesses, people go, oh, you know, Apple Pay is picking up, so we should get NFC payments. You don't have to stress about just NFC. You can get an all-in-one package, right? That says, you know, I'm covering everything. It's two ninety nine. It's not that much of an expense compared to, you know, you well, just getting we've one. Seen, we've seen a bunch of small uh, retailers okay. go with like iPad point of sale services. Here's, exactly. Here's yeah. the here's where Point makes its money. It's they they make money by taking a percentage of app subscription cost. So I believe there's an app you have to subscribe to this. Okay. To, right. to, that's that's how they're going to make money. And. Um, to be able to you to be able to get used to uh, use the service because I think what this does, as I'm looking at it a little deeper, I think it not only does it take it's you know, it's, it's like a POS system that I think you customize as well for your your particular your, your, your particular business. So I'm pretty okay. so there's definitely a Mac end that 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 has to be supported in some way there. Yeah, no, and they're, they're going to make money off of the setup and the yeah, this, this, I know, this is, and I think it's going to they got they got they into they got into it as a partner, which is huge because that's quick it's QuickBooks. Yeah, that's that's that. So this is probably going to be able to import directly into the, into into the sales, uh, and that's probably some some of the fees you're probably paying through that to to do this. Um, this is pretty. Cool. I could see this going. I can actually see this going somewhere where this takes what Square was doing, but taking it to a further point. Where um, <laughs> no pun intended, but uh, where where Square was just really all about just getting payments done and being you know and just being sort of the uh, a mobile payment system, and it had a small amount of fees. This seems like this is going to be like here. Your POS is all of this now. Your register is all of this. You know, completely cashless transactions, and um, you only have to have one register you have to worry about. So you don't have to worry about one till instead of worrying about five to six tills and stuff like that. Working in retail and and seeing people like dealing with the tills and stuff, that's like a a major, major like pain in the ass to be honest with you. Especially if you have like six or seven registers in a large in a large store and having to balance. The tills to make sure at the end of the day all, all your money balances out, and a lot of the times you have to you have to factor in error. There's error that has to be factored into it, so it can be off by a certain amount, and they just take that as it being off. This will allow it to be exact, accurate, and far more, um, and, and 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 far. It just it just seems like it's going to be a, overall a lot better of a system it has analytic tracking. It seems like it's going to be good. Um, something that looks like looks like then a big company can try to come out and try to kill with fire. Usually, when the technology is something that's pretty cool, they try to kill it with fire, like they did NFC. So they can't do that here. So this, this <laughs> and it's here, so they can't do it here. They 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 they're still everyone's still getting paid, but um. Yeah, all right. I mean, yeah, it, you're right. It, it does it does make sense on that, and um, I mean, it's good to see at least, even though with all that stifling with uh, constancy, we have something else that at least will bring at least some respite. But some I think degree. the biggest move here is the fact that it's future proof. Yeah, it's a fact that it's a big play. Future proof. It, it, it goes it goes ahead and, and gives you that gateway into the chip and pin world that we, yeah. we which we have to be in in 2015. Exactly. Which so Europe you, is you anyway. Into that at very low cost and very low overhead. So I, I think it's something that especially little small mom and pops are going to look to, as opposed to you know redoing your you know, all your point of sales in the store. You just get one of these and you know you're good to go. Go. Yeah. True. Makes sense. All right. Moving on. Um, we had some uh, launches this week. Uh, we had the Nexus Six. Google's uh, uh, Fablet. None of us, of course, have it, but uh, just thoughts on the <laughs> Nexus 6. Um, any, any, any thoughts? I mean, f- at least for the fact that it sold out in about 10 minutes. Right, I'll, I'll, show, I'll show you what my hardcore Android feed was saying on Google+. It's too expensive. Uh, you shouldn't be that much for a Nexus. Nexuses are supposed to be cheaper, and you, it's too much money, so you should, it's not worth it. It's, it's not worth it for the price. You need to do other things because the price is worth not it. <laughs> That's the sound that it makes. <laughs> like about it. Yeah. The, to be honest with you, the fact that it is more expensive actually piqued my interest more into looking into the Nexus. That's all. You know, the six nine nine. That must be a good device at that price. At the three forty and three hundred dollar price tag, it was just kind of like eh, I'm paying a little over for a mid range device. 
this, I'm paying, and I'm not getting mid-range. I'm getting high-end specs, a high-end device. It's not like it's the Nexus that everybody's been asking for. And that's our, these, hard, these hardcore nerds were the same ones asking for these specs for the last three Nexus phones. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The last three. They always, so, you, so you got to pay for it. Coming? Why can't this be here? It should be this price. And I shut up. Now you just got what you not now you got it. Now you have it. It's sitting right here. This has got better specs than the one plus one. It's here. Pure Android. Shut the fuck up and pay money. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, how about you, Sam? <laughs> Any thoughts? Well, I'm I, I really not um, been into the Nexus phones per se because I've looked at like a lot of people say they're yeah, the reference design. So I tend to get whatever comes out after. The Nexus phones, but um, at the end of the day, it's it's good to see Google kind of going out there and you know working with Motorola, which they've already sold, um, to basically drop the gauntlet and say, hey, this is it. This this is this is our Nexus phone. This is a company that we owned. This is what they should have done with the Moto X when it came out. This is what they should have done while they had Motorola. Make a phone that's a flagship. This is Google's best, and yeah, it makes sense. I, I, I like it. It's it's expensive, but you got to pay for those uh, yeah. sensors and chips in there. Man. Well, 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 that's that's awesome. It's just like about the, oh, go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say really quickly. It's just like the Surface Pro. I mean, we we had conversations with with the Surface about well, other computers are gonna come in and they're gonna be cheaper, and you're like that's not the point. If Android is is going to compete, it needs to be able to tackle both fronts, both the flagship and the entry level markets. Because uh, right now, like Windows Phone, for example, is really only competitive in a numbers game at the entry level. It's not very competitive at the uh, the flagship market in terms of uh, sales. So for Google to put out a reference design, one of the things that they also need to put out is a benchmark for making a premium, high-end experience. Otherwise, Android starts to descend into more of a commodity as well. So I think it's a strategic move on their part, just like Microsoft did with the Surface Pro, to make sure that they're keeping that threshold high. Yeah, I, I still think this is also a competitive um, strike to taking away that thought process of Samsung being, you know, Android itself. Even though Samsung is technically doing it on its own by just being shitty really recently. Oh, but, come you know, on. Uh, no, I mean the Note Four is helping b- back in that, but you know, it's doing it's doing <laughs> that. It's also it's just it's just them saying, you know, yeah, this is what Android is. You know, you don't think of it as just being a Samsung device because for a while, at least for at least last two years, it was. You know, I'd say Android. I'd say there's still a pretty healthy chunk in the market that looks at everything Android as a Galaxy. As a Galaxy, yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. Well, now maybe they'll go back to looking at them as droids. Who knows? Yeah. Hey, uh, but, speaking yeah, of that, to talk about too. Sorry, droid. <laughs> but um, but this is the this is the. This is the first time. I, I honestly think that this phone might, is, even at its price tag, will might sell more than the rest of their other Nexus phones because it's not a nerfed device. It's just simply put, not. It's like, oh, I can use this as a flagship phone and I can have this for a few years and not feel like it's going to get old on me really fast. Um, well, I mean, yeah. I actually think I actually think that if the Nexus sells better, it's not going to be because of the Nexus. It's going to be because of the iPhone. I think the iPhone coming out in different sizes now, and especially the iPhone 6 Plus, is going to validate this idea of having a super large phone for some consumers out there. And they're going to start looking around at, well, I could get um, an iPhone or I could get a large screen to Android. So what Androids are out there? Oh, this one's directly supported by Google, just like my iPhone is directly supported by Apple. And I think that commentary will be really easy for um, people leaving the Apple ecosystem to glean. I think that's something that'll be really attractive to people looking to switch camps. And the fact that they have carriers on board with this, so there's a good right. chance that these they, they could have subsidized pricing. Well, well, we saw the leak for the subsidized pricing for AT and T, which they took down at was what forty nine bucks. Forty nine bucks, yeah. which yeah, I'm willing to go on contract for that price. For the, exactly, <laughs> yeah. For that, price. <laughs> that, 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 that's a lot. That's so, a, the, the market disruption won't unfortunately come from unlocked pricing, but it looks like they're going to be working with carriers to make sure that market disrupting is happening in some way. So I mean, like the, the 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 spirit of the Nexus lives on, even yeah. if the pricing isn't where it was before. Yeah, no, definitely. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at that and saying, you know, in the fact that I think Android 5.0 is probably the first time it looks like it's a user-friendly version of Android, 
that looks like a common person could possibly pick up and use without like needing to know code might actually work out for them. So um, yeah, I mean that that is true. But before we jump onto the droid, just to yeah. remind people again, since we caught off from the last hangout, we have two sets of giveaways. The first one, which you can enter now, is you get to win the Ghostbusters uh, remastered uh, edition in 4K Blu-ray. Um, all you have to do is tweet out your uh, Halloween costume tag, board at work, BW1, and some gadget guy, and we will pick out the winner. So go ahead and do it, or else you know. This stays here. It's, it's not open. I might as well open it if you guys don't tweet out. So just letting you know. And uh, yeah, so moving on to Droid. Uh, Verizon also announced the Droid Turbo, which is the successor to the Droid Max or Droid Line as we've always known it. Uh, Turbo is also just like uh, you know all the devices we see now. It is specced out to the premium. Uh, other than the fact that it's not a fablet, it's a 5.2 inch device um, altogether. Um, I guess I'll start off since I'm have used the device. Uh, it's it's nice. It's you know it's one of those things where it looks like Motorola is on a roll of just throwing out things, you know, that are uh, of you know quality specs. Uh, the only bummer I have with the device is its name and the fact that the turbo was supposed to last 48 hours. No. What kind of battery life are you getting on it? The okay, so the Note 4 on power save mode goes for about 20. I can do about 28, you know. Um, no, 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 heavy use, but about 28, you know. I can no, 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 I've, I've experienced the same with the Note 4. Yeah, the turbo on the same amount of use, I'm pushing 24, yeah. and it has a bigger battery, it's a 3900 milliamp battery. So, well, Something is up. Is you might need to cycle the battery a couple of times. Yeah, something is up, but it's it, 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 I, I don't know. Like I, it's just not. Well, and also, I mean, it's it's hard to say when we're talking about that initial use too, because a big chunk of that is also taken up by setup. I mean, my first day with the Note 4 was miserable in terms of battery life, but I was also running it a lot harder than my normal day-to-day -day usage is. Yeah, I mean, I, I would agree, but at thirty, like I'm doing the math at thirty-nine, it shouldn't. That should not happen. It, it should it be closer. It 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 doesn't matter what should happen. It's that you're you're not uh, you're not doing typical use. Oh no, I, I've actually no. I, is... I, I've I've gone through. So this is my third. Actually, it's not third. This is my fourth day with the device. I've cycled it a bunch of times, and I'm mm -hmm. still getting the same results, which is telling me that it's not going to change at all. I've even reduced some of my workload just to see if I find if I go lighter. I'm I'm stopping at like between 22 and 24. No change at all. So I'm I'm looking at saying that you know the battery advertisement is false at this point because it's only giving me it, it's giving me what the LG G3 and the Galaxy Note 4 do with a smaller battery and a bigger screen. So that's that's my only pitfall. And it's a droid, so take that Verizon. <laughs> no, no. See, but the thing is, is the, the Droid, the Droid Max from last year, that thing lasted like a beast, you know. And the battery size is, you know, it's slightly smaller. It's like a 3200 battery. So um, maybe there's something up with software that's just giving the glitch. I think because it just shouldn't do that. But anyway, um, any any thoughts on uh, on Verizon and its Droid uh, device? Turbo. I kind of like it. It's a design itself is pretty cool. Especially the black one I saw, exactly, which was pretty nice. The oh, feel of that. What the ballistic, uh, they call it ballistic nylon. Yeah, that's like a cool. cool. It looks like something you would find. Like, it's the kind of cell phone you get some of from crisis TVs. Are they not calling it? Are they not calling it Kevlar anymore? Oh no, they have Kevlar, but they also have oh, okay. ballistic nylon. Oh. <laughs> yeah. You have a phone on you. It looks like literally something. That yeah, I, I have it here. Uh, Mass Effect. I'm not, not Mass Effect, but uh, Crisis with you. It's, it has a, 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 a kind of textured feel on the back with the metal. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, this, I don't see that thing selling all that well. But we'll see. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it, like, how have the previous droids been doing on uh, on Verizon? Less and less. Oh, I mean, less and less, but um, they've got a good pickup. I uh, mean, it's one of those things where um, I've seen Verizon. I've just I've seen Verizon users use them, so um, I I think it still will sell well. It's just it's an alternative. It's really the best alternative to getting a phablet. If you don't want to get 5.7, you know, if you want to get something slightly larger but not that big, then it's probably the best phone as a Verizon user to get. You know, 
uh, in terms of because it has everything you need: 805, three gigs. It's running stock Android, you know. Um, so it's, you're going to get that seamless experience, like you said, so if you're switching over, so to speak. Uh, the camera is improved, um, but not for nighttime at all. <laughs> so well, I, don't, I mean, I don't it's a Motorola. Idea. I don't. I don't. I mean, they they've always been about a generation behind in terms. Yeah. Of um, but in terms, I mean, in terms of use and functionality, it, it's a solid phone. Like, it's, I'm just griping with the battery not lasting two days. It lasts a whole day for you. So <laughs> you'll be. Pretty surprising. Yeah, you'd be fine, and it's got also got turbo charge too. So, um, you know, charges in yeah, quick charge. So. Yeah, it, it, what eight eight hours in 50, 15 minutes or, uh, or so. Then, so. Uh, you can get fifty percent in about thirty minutes, which is awesome. Wait, this camera doesn't. This twenty one megapixel doesn't have OIS. No, no, it doesn't have OIS. It has a wider um, wider aperture on that. Oh, so does it take quality pictures though? Yeah, it does. It, I mean, it does dig solid pictures uh, daytime. It's the nighttime pictures, not mm, no. Um, what about the the, the the low light on that thing? Oh, low light too? No, no. That, no, that, that be, not the camera, but I mean the screen, the low brightness on the screen. Oh, this the screen. The screen yeah. is better than it's the best QHD screen on on the planet right now. No questions Just whatsoever. Hands down. We compared it with the Note 4, and I'm looking at it, I'm, I'm very impressed with the Note, 4's, um, the Note 4 screen. But then we took it down, like we took the brightness low, and I was like, I hate the Note 4 screen now. <laughs> it's like, I, I want the Droid screen. That's amazing. It's bright. It's, it's it, Even in low brightness, it's very vibrant. Yeah, that's probably cool. what's killing the battery. <laughs> <laughs> About the sun. Yeah, that is very. Our very customers cool. seem to want shiny things. Yeah, exactly. The like, battery. You're like you're looking at it like ooh ooh dying. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I mean that's that's it's it's still a solid phone. I'm not I'm not discounting it. The fact that it's not getting 48 hour battery is actually a, a case improvement in saying that now we're expecting more and more from battery oh, life. You know, I was rather, about to point that out. You like, know. Remember back, you remember back in the day when we were like eight hours, you're, you're like, amen. A year, ago, <laughs> a year ago this time, everyone bitching about how Google needs to be one that can take you through a full day or Android needs to have a flagship that can go through a full day of use. Yeah, okay. Now, now it's now like, it. my phone doesn't run for a week. This is crap. <laughs> <laughs> or, or like, I remember um, when uh, Alex reviewed the uh, Huawei phone. He was like, it's like three days, man. It's still running. Because that one has like a 5,000 milliamp battery, some right. shit, stuff like that. He was like, this phone is still going on. I mean, it's funny because you could hear it in his review. Like, he was like, I tried to turn this thing off. It doesn't want to die, so... <laughs> yeah, just, man, just, I was just like, I'm kind of scared of that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so anyway, so that's that's it. Any more tech news before we move into entertainment? Anything else that uh, we missed out this week? Oh well, um I was actually looking at how the whole chip and pin works, right? And for security and just basically saying, all right, versus NFC versus chip and pin, I think that's something that needs to be looked at, right? Because at the end of the day, um, we're talking about these technologies like currency, Google Wallet, Apple Pay, and to one's point, currency I wouldn't trust it because we have had issues with retailers, um, you know, using our data. Um, you know, we also had the fab gate from Apple, and Google seems to be the only one who's actually done a pretty decent job of protecting our data. But even so. I wonder what security on Google Wallet truly is. It's it's simple uh, simple security because it's not widely adopted, or security because you know they actually have a great um, encryption system in there and they have a great um, process in handling their uh, information. So at the end of the day, I think even with all of this, especially with NFC, uh, when you don't have your physical card in your hand, when you don't have a physical um, password to type into the machine. These all, all, all these other methods of like you know um, cashless or uh, cardless transaction becomes a little suspect even with currency. I think that's something we see across all of them. It's something I think we, we should all keep in mind at the end of the day when we talk about NFC, be it um, Google Wallet, Apple Pay, or currency at the end of the day. Just trying to throw that. Okay, that was uh, that's all a deep thought, man. Uh, yeah. yeah, you gotta you gotta think deep sometimes, man. Right? <laughs> As you can see from everybody else, they're pondering their heads down, like, oh god, really, Sam? We have. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm playing with Gmail 5.0 right now. Okay, I, yeah, I, I all right. So yeah, since Sam just said, I, 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 I'm sure it was erudite and really well put, and was probably very well considered, but I'm, it's new. 
Uh, so, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, so since we've, I guess we can use this opportunity to talk a little bit more about Gmail 5.0 since we've at least touched on it a little bit. Uh, initial thoughts, I'll say mine is, so the, the good thing is that it has my folders from Yahoo mm -hmm. in in order, and um, that I, I I don't like this color crap they do. I really don't. To me, it's like I don't care. Just give me email. But I, I mean, um, like I'm, I am still sort of a little torn on Material Design. I, yeah. I think it looks pretty, but I also think it hides some functionality behind. I mean, because again, we get really cranky about things. Like it's not conveyance. It's not. It doesn't show you what you want to do, or it doesn't easily show you features. And I think it's one of those things where Material Design introduces a different type of learning curve into Android, but it's prettier. So. Okay. Uh, any any other thoughts, Warren? Have you, are you still using it, or you're you're? Uh... Yeah, I'm just kind of poking around here. I mean, it, I mean, I, I, I know where to find. I, I, it seems fine to me. I don't. I don't. The material design. I, I like the material UI. Um, I, I like the fact that it's not throwing millions of features in your face. Maybe that you know that's a, that's. I mean, it's nice looking. I see my folders. I see my, you know, everything I need to see on here. It's um, it's easy to kind of navigate around. You can choose between your accounts. It has some new fancy animations. That's nice. Um, overall, it's a, it looks pretty cool. Um, I don't I don't have any gripes about it too much. Okay. All right. And, and I, I, I guess I'm I guess I'm just like it's an email application. So I'm like, can it send and receive? Oh yeah, I mean, I I, I agree. It's just like it's so. As long as I can send and receive email, and I can see my email, and it keeps everything tracked, uh, you know, it's not a huge deal. Okay, all right. So not a huge deal. Looks like it works. Um, so that is uh, that's Gmail 5.0. We have a link up. You can go ahead and download the APK and install on your Android device. Uh, works with every single email possible. So. Uh, that should be fine. Again, you know, guys, if you want to win Ghostbusters Blu-ray, it looks like nobody wants to. Uh, well, and also, I mean, we might need to just, I, I, I mean, like, we should maybe look at staging giveaways, especially after what happened with uh, our, our Hangouts meltdown. I mean, meltdown. It, it, it just took a little while to get people that were watching a discontinued Hangout. Hangout, yeah, exactly. Forward. So, I mean, that, that's, that's definitely, I mean, it's not on us, you know, YouTube definitely messed us up there, but we do apologize for having you guys <laughs> I apologize. Yeah. So maybe 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 this this week we take a buy uh, we take a bye week on uh, giveaways. Uh, giveaways. All right. Promote it properly for next week. All right. Cool. Go. We'll, we'll do that. So let's move on to entertainment. Oh, real quick. Oh, one last thing before we do entertainment. We do have three tech comments. Let's just get those out of the way right now. Oh, okay. Um, Andrew Maletta, and I think he's asking about the Nexus. Do you guys think this device will be unhindered by carriers in terms of software updates? Just a quick, you know, your a quick thought from each person. I I think it's. Uh... Okay. No, so it, a, no, it, it won't be. It won't be be. Because the history, well, the history with with the T-Mobile and AT&T versions, they didn't have any uh, issues for the Nexus Five, so I don't, th I think that would still can probably continue. What do you think, Sam? That's uh, going to. What do you think, Warren? Um, I think uh, all depends. I think though, the other certain carriers don't want to have issues. The certain carriers will check <laughs> that. You know, not quite sure what they're gonna do. They might stifle. You never know. They got a history of it. Um, we'll see what happens. I, I I really can't say. So this is the first time we've seen it this kind of way with the Nexus. Everybody's getting it, and there really isn't a whole lot of a uh, whole lot of uh, blockage or, or like excuses or some lame reason why one company doesn't have it over the other right now. So we'll see. We will see when the first update comes out. We will see. And my okay. thoughts are there'll probably be a, a subtle delay on carrier branded versions. Um, and I think Verizon customers will probably get the shaft. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Check yeah. Out. If, yeah, yeah like I'm having flashbacks. So even with the, the, the icon, the, the Lumia icon, I'm having flashbacks to the Galaxy Nexus in terms of support. So uh, unfortunately, it just seems like Verizon doesn't really like to play ball with that kind of uh, timetable. Eliminate a feature here and there. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Lou Rod 76. Uh, the Nexus 6 takes pictures underwater. 
I don't... Is the Nexus 6 water submergible? I thought it was just splash resistant. Yeah, I don't think so, Lurod. Um, but anyway, uh, it takes pictures underwater, wireless charging, 6 inches, uh, 6 dollars for a 64 gigabyte version, bang for your buck. The Note 4 sells for $800 with only 32 gigabytes and no wireless charging. That's a deal breaker. Okay, let me let me break this down for you, Lurod. I just did the... I, well, I did... That was the battle of it with the Droid Turbo. The Note 4 doesn't have... It's not water resistant. I, I definitely agree there. But it's got expandable storage up to 128 gigabytes, which means I can transfer stuff from my old phone all over all of this. It's got the S Pen and it's got better multitasking on the larger screen anyway. So Well but he's uh, talking about the Nexus six. Yeah. It's still got a better multitasking on a larger screen than the Nexus six. The Nexus saying. six so, has yeah. a larger it has a larger screen than the M- multitasking split window. Which Nexus oh, six doesn't right, right, have right, at all. Right. Yeah. And the S Pen is actually very good. Yeah. Well, and also, don't forget the, the that fingerprint right, right. scanner that I can't use, and the heart rate monitor, which you know we're all gonna have Microsoft bands anyway. Uh, yeah, so and, and yeah, and then and then also to, to add to that, the camera is better. I haven't even tried the Nexus Six camera, and I will tell you right now because it's the same 30 megapixel camera on the Moto X, and no. Nah, well, and, and and also this is the thing that I'm most positive after using IsoCell, that Samsung's uh, sensor on the Galaxy S5 and the Galaxy Alpha. Um, already, I'm going to be going out in as soon as we're done with this hangout because the sun finally broke through clouds here in LA <laughs> to shoot a video on on the Note 4. Uh, Isocell has been phenomenal. I think it's the first camera sensor I've seen in a while that really makes me think that another company can give Nokia a run for its money, uh, especially in the United States market where we just don't really have a strong Sony presence. And yeah. uh, com- combining it with optical image stabilization is what we've all been waiting for in mm-hmm. Android. So I think this is going to be the Android camera of the year. Okay. And uh, Lou Rod says Droid Turbo giveaway. I see if Verizon gives me one to give away, sure. I would, I would gladly, <laughs> right. gladly do that. We, uh, need, we need way more people sharing these hangouts and stuff if you guys want us to yeah. start fronting phones. If you, if you want us to give us give our stuff, just keep sharing it out and uh, we will... We but will but I should say, we, Lou Rod has always been a supporter of this this podcast and this hangout, and I've seen him sharing our stuff on Google Plus a lot, so... That is very true. He'll That's be one that. of the first to know if and when we give away. <laughs> and that means Lou Rod is a Verizon customer. <laughs> 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 no, we use this. Yeah. Uh, all right, so let's move on to entertainment. Some entertainment news this week, which uh, Juan and I have covered in, in some length in the separate hangout, but Marvel announced their Phase 3 movies, a whole slew, including Doctor Strange, Black Panther from Wakanda, um, Captain Marvel, Inhumans, Captain America, Civil War, and then we have the Avengers Infinity Wars Part 1 and Part 2. So, thoughts. I will start off with uh, Sam since you want to I've already gone through this uh, in like, a very long in depth session. Yeah, yeah. So, so your well, thoughts, um, Sam? I don't even know what to think of that. It's like they're going all over the place. What are they going to do? Are they, are they really going to do like Death of the Avengers and like have I, Randall I, Maximoff do the whole. What it, where, how far I, I think Captain America it? is going to die in Infinity Wars 1 because, uh, what's his wow. name? Steve Evans only has two more movies in his contract, and he said he pretty much doesn't feel like doing it. He wants to literally either uh, direct or at least move on to other parts in acting. I think this is a big speculation that the reason why Inhumans are there is because Inhumans will become the mutants for Marvel. They are yeah, going to basically introduce yeah, yeah. them as their own version of mutants, and the Maximoff teen twins are the first versions yeah. of Inhumans that we're meeting. And because also in the comic books next year, they're going to try and write Inhumans as being mutants and kind of wipe out X-Men because they don't own that. Like, Marvel has been killing off their comic books. They've, they're killing off everything that does that's not in their stable of comic they, books. They don't own X-Men? Well, they don't own the rights to the movies for X-Men. So, right. co- so, so for instance, like um, Fox owns Fantastic Four. They're, mm-hmm. they're killing off their comic book. They killed off Wolverine just for the heck of it. Uh, they're thinking of killing off uh, X-Men or phasing them out. Yeah. That's what they've been doing just because they don't have the rights. Like, it's it, it, it kind of foolish. Sense, but the humans are... I mean, it, it, it's a good way if you... You know, that actually makes a lot of sense what they're doing. That could be a way they end up maybe turning around and getting them back at some point. But yeah, true. If you if you cut off all the res if you cut off all the resources, what do you have left? 
No, there's enough. There's enough comic history to write anything. Yeah, but in humans, though, that's that's just because the humans are basically they're mutants. They no, were they were they were not. experimented on to on. You know, yeah, to they're, they're basically modified humans, humans from Stone Age days, and they just basically went off and evolved on your own. So, in other words, Black Bolt is not a mutant. The dude is the equivalent of Superman. Like, Actually, Black Bolt, Black, no, Black Bolt is not. Black Bolt is, is weak. Come on, dude, really. That's why you don't bring the Inhumans into fights. All you need to do is have Black Bolt say, hello, and everyone dies. And, and then <laughs> what happened to Black Bolt when he said hello? Hulk said, I want to hear you scream. And yeah, then that, beat the crap out of him. But, because, but, but that's different. Hulk is a whole other level. That's why Hulk is I, a I love that comic book. Sorry. He's <laughs> but no, nah, the Inhumans are. I don't. To make them mutant to me would be diminishing them. They yeah. are basically that. Um, you know, they're basically the Shi'ar Empire is attacking everyone. And they're wiping out the humans and they're wiping out the mutants. Okay, humans go in there and say that. And you just drop black bolts and beats everyone up and like, okay. But now it's like, really, you're gonna make them mutants? Like they're gonna be oh. regular Joes? Nah, I don't know. I, I I don't like that idea, but I see what you, where they're going with it. But it's interesting. It's like I, I guess it's interesting, but I don't like that idea. The the one thing we didn't talk about Juan is uh, a Captain Marvel movie. I know we didn't touch much on that, but oh, yeah. yeah. But what what are your thoughts on that? Especially like you know, it's kind of to me to me that looks more like I don't think Marvel really still <laughs> to push it out. I think the fact that Wonder Woman is coming out, they just had to. Um, to me, I don't think it's something that they they were really at least for up for in, in doing first. Your thoughts? Um, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, because the thing, the thing is, I mean, the, the the problem that I have with some of these announcements, and we touched on this a little in our, our massive thing, is like it's also just sort of really overwhelming to kind of weigh in on individual properties when part of this part of the storytelling and part of the canon is so far out yet like we we really don't know what they're going to be doing with movies as we start talking about films that are slated to release you know years from now so uh, i it, again it's another one to throw on the pile of tentatively very exciting and i think they could do something really interesting with it and and now i'm in wait and see mode until we get more info on what's going to be going coming down the pike okay all right cool um, oh yeah, they also released a clip of um, what will start Civil War. They basically it's the seeds of Civil War where Captain America and uh, Iron Man were chopping wood, and basically they were referring to. Um, it's almost like it was a conversation where Tony Stark was talking about how he doesn't necessarily trust people. And Captain America was like, you know, you just have to let people do their own thing, you know, with like with the, talking about the Maximoff twins, and that kind of started the whole debate of, you know, almost like started the debate of like registration or at least putting people mm -hmm. in categories. So it looks like for them, their civil war is more about just having things organized, uh, right. especially you know with heroes popping out left and right, rather than it being um, uh, identity, which is which leads me to believe that there will be no Spider Man. Um, or in, in in civil war, which to me would be the saddest thing possible, because I could care I would care less. I don't know. I mean, I think there's still the potential. I think they've got to play that quiet until they can potentially work out some kind of cross licensing deal. Yeah, I mean, it's still 2016 because that's when right. Spider Man. I mean, that's when Civil War is coming out. Uh, we do know that Black Panther will show up first time in Civil War also. So uh, it looks like he he might be that figure because he's a foreign entity. I'm sorry, foreign uh, dignitary. I said entity. Um, you know, he might be that figure figure that might stand in between. You know, the skirmish, so to speak. But um, and uh, to me, no Spider Man might just not. Might just... Isn't he like a huge like part of that whole thing? Who? Oh. Spider Man and that whole. Spider Man is the center, as far yeah. as I'm concerned. No, I, I would say he's a, he's, a, he's a pivotal part of one of those stories, but he's not the center of it. I think. No, he, he, he. I think he represents the heart. The heart. He's the heart. Of Civil yeah, War so he's because, the because he's the one who gets pulled into the middle of, of the fight, spar, be, sparring between Captain America and Iron Man, oh, and. He's also the one that it was the biggest deal that he unmasked. Yeah. That's that's a pivotal moment in Civil War is, is Spider-Man taking off the mask. Well, I think um, for for me with Spider-Man, I think what was more interesting about him was not the taking out, uh, taking away of the mask, or basically the unmasking, also Tony Stark's control 
like the, it, it basically exemplifies the, the level of control that Tony Stark likes to have. And I think they can they can do that without having Spider-Man because if you remember, Spider-Man's suit was something that Tony Stark used against him because Tony Stark gave him that nanotechnology suit that had spider arms and everything. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And basically just shut it off and tried controlling it when he, when Spider-Man wouldn't fall in line. I think it's just it exemplifies that control like issue. No, no, I I agree. You can do it with yeah, anyone. You can do that without. But, but my 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 problem is that do I care about anyone? That's the thing. As much as you know, you know, as much as like some of the new Spider-Man movie, you know, wasn't well received or a lot of people didn't like, is that people still care about Spider-Man. Spider-Man is that character that even if you just threw him in the Marvel universe and you did that to him, everybody would be like, "Oh, come on, really? It's Spidey." I mean, that's what you get off the bat. Yeah, which one of the big three? So. Yeah. So which which you can't do with you? Who are you gonna do? Hawkeye? No. Black Widow? No, I'm sorry. Um, Maximoff Twins? No. No, I think what you can do is instead of using a character to do that, you can use uh, you can show that with the creation of Ultron, Tony Stark was aiming at some kind of control over the superhuman meta human community, and he just it just went out of hand. You can show that without having Spider Man. I would like Spider Man to be there, but I think they can. But the event of that are, are going to be done before those two get in a little civil war spat. Which everybody everybody thought was supposed to be like what was everybody's assuming this Civil War was supposed to be Avengers three. I think the reason it's become a Captain America movie is because how successful that last Captain America, America movie was. Yeah, and I think that's why they made this shift. To, I mean, I, I I agree. I think I think you're not going to see. I mean, I, you can like I said, you can do that, but will we care the, well enough I mean, to that point? That's why I'm saying that. I, um, here's, here's the thing. I think I think we're not going to get a resolution in the Civil War movie because this is what's going to skew, skew and skew, split everything yeah. ever up until we get to the last two movies of Infinity War. Infinity Wars. I think that's when we're going to start seeing. You said see, Infinity War. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> terrible name. Uh, Infinity War isn't the bad name. Um, terrible name. Lou, Lou Rod said Marvel is rebooting Civil War again. This is what Marvel does this next year, and the, there goes Spider-Man role or in the comic. Most likely, we'll go to Black Panther. If he goes to Black Panther, I could care less. Why? Because Black Panther lives in Wakanda. He can go back yeah. home. He's a king. And what are you going to do to him? You're going to register him, and then what? Like what? Yeah. So I mean, that's, oh, that's coming that's, to arrest you. Guess what? I got an army behind me. What are you gonna do? I mean, oh, I, so, I, I, but, I mean, also, but but also like like with to, to Lou Rod, to Lou Rod's comment there, we've yet to see what they do with Black Panther. Again, this is all speculation based on the comics that we already have access to. Not are they going to turn Black Panther into a really sympathetic character? Like, are we gonna see devastation hit Wakanda? Are we gonna see you know like him not be able to go home? You know, so there, there's, there are things that we can do that can really upset the apple cart in terms of all the things we know, uh, because they haven't really held to oh, comics canon for any of these films to any great degree. Yeah, no, the, I know what's going to happen. I already know what's going to happen. I already <laughs> had an epiphany. Wakanda, you know, his, his, his homeland's going to get attacked by Ebola, and he's going to come to the U.S. looking for a cure. Oh, <laughs> God, really? no. Really? No. No, no. Let's just let's just. There's going to be something Ebola like that's going to happen, and it's going to. I'm telling that, you. No, they they they, they won't do that. I, 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 I think, think that's probably going to happen. Is Ultron is going to go to. Um, Ultron's probably going to go to Wakanda, and um, you know um, what's his name? Oh, man, T'Challa yeah. is going to get pissed off enough to go. You know what? Who built this damn machine? So well, he's like, you know what actually might happen? You know, you know what actually might happen that's going to make more sense in your universe? Is, is, is I think what's going to happen is there's going to be war going on in his country, and the weapons are going to be used are going to be stock weapons, the ones he got lost that, from the original Iron Man movie that they were selling his weapons and stuff. I'm pretty sure that's what's going to make him come all the way to, to America. That's probably what it's going to be. Because you remember, he, I think he saw his weapons in another one of the movies, too. No, I, I think you're going to have, uh, because we have Yusili's claw in the trailer, we're going to have uh, Vibranium being mined illegally to create Ultron, which caused some havoc, um, probably some destruction in Wakanda, like you mm-hmm. mentioned. But and somehow then, it's going to be yeah. Stark technology yeah. has to be involved. And, and that's going to... 
uh, that's going to come back and he's going to say yes. Um, like yeah. you know, Tony well, Stark. And, and also, is... I think I think that's going to go hand in hand with Ultron now being a Stark creation. You creation, know, I, yeah, I, yeah. I think those those storylines are going to intertwine really well. But I think in that there is an opportunity to turn Black Panther in this movie universe into a character similar to Spider-Man's role in Civil War. It's just we've got to lay the groundwork for it. We've got to establish it. And if you can get people to care in the films, and it kind of doesn't matter what we do. Uh, I'm gonna put it, I'm gonna put it out there out there now. I will not care because Black Panther should not be. Winning. I know, but you're like There's uber geek, and you've already made up your mind about things before you yes. even see films that aren't gonna come out for like three or three four years. years. I, know. I know, but I'll still watch it, and I'll be pleasantly surprised. Oh anyway. well, I'm sure Marvel will be very happy to hear that. That's very gracious uh, yes. of you. Oh, I'll still watch your. I, I, I don't think that any one of us in this <laughs> chat that would probably say well, we would not watch a comic book movie just on principle alone. No, no, we no, no, on principle no, no, no. alone, I will oh. not watch Catwoman. On principle alone, I have yet to sit here and watch the Avatar movie. I have not on, watched. On, it and on principle alone, I have not seen the Ghost Rider sequel. Oh and, God! Oh, no, don't, don't have no, 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 that, no. You should see that movie. That is the um, oh God! It's a culmination of bad <laughs> elements to come in to make one great whole. It was amazing in such a bad way. You need to see I that. Still haven't seen the Dragon Ball Z movie either. Oh God! Let, 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 look, we can go down the line. <laughs> anyway, let's let's definitely no, round I, up. I, I, this, this we're, we're, we're pro. I guess what I should say is that we're all pro to watch superhero movies. Because that's the, we, we like that subject. That right? so. mm-hmm. Okay. All right. All right. Cool, guys. Well, thank you very much, everyone, for chiming in. Um, before we go, since we, we're skipping the, the Ghostbusters giveaway, we have one thing to give away from courtesy of Microsoft. We have a Microsoft Treasure Tag, uh, which will work with you. Win this one. This thing is not actually showing up properly anyway. So you can win this. And what is our question for the week? <laughs> Oh, we need a good question. For yeah, we need one because I actually don't have one in my head. Normally, it's something we figure out during the show, but our show also got um, derailed used by YouTube. <laughs> so, well, what do you think will happen with currency? The best answer. It doesn't need to be accurate, but just give us something you think is going to happen. What, oh, oh, the what business app do you use and why? Uh... Yeah, yeah, that would work. Let's do fitness app. We'll we'll do something positive because uh, I I would hope that everyone's answer for currency would be it's a little fiery death. It will match match our thinking. So, yeah, what fitness app do you use and why? And you get to win the Microsoft Treasure Tag. Again, for you to enter, you need to subscribe to all the channels, Board at Work, BW1, and some Gadget Guy. Uh, Leave your answer, and uh, we will pick them next week. So that's pretty much it, guys. Thank you. Um, Any? Uh, just a quick rundown of uh, what can we, ex- we can expect from you guys next week. Uh, how about you starting with you, Juan? Well, uh, n- as soon as we're out the out of this hangout, I'm going outside to start shooting video, so expect one of my super hardcore detailed camera reviews coming out uh, probably Monday of next week because I also have to do some low light and uh, nighttime video test shots. Then after that, it's uh, camera gear. I got a box full of lenses from Samsung. And so breaking in my new Samsung NX30, all of my reviews are actually being shot on the NX30 now. I've almost completely moved away from Canon uh, from my reviews. And uh, so I'm going to be going through the 16mm Prime, the 45mm Prime, and the 5200 Zoom. So uh, be on the lookout for those as well. Okay. How about you, um, Sam? Uh, man, I'm, I'm, I'm outstanding on a few uh, of these, but I think the big ones are going to be... Uh... Like we mentioned last week, the stocks will be <laughs> and, uh, the 65 No inch. long awaited. Uh, it's, 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 it's a dock. <laughs> we'll get that going. I just have to set it up here so I can uh, do a good... I have, to, I have to get a good video set up, and I haven't gotten a good idea in mind to do that, other than like moving my monitor to another room. But yeah, maybe that's what I am doing. Um, but um, that, and we have the, the Samsung UHD 65-inch that uh, came in yesterday, so um, that will be that will be uh, something in the future, probably up this week, hopefully, most likely, the unboxing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right, cool. And, and, and Warren, um, anything to expect? Um, I'll probably have my Microsoft band review up next week. Uh, it's probably going to be the big thing. I could think of, and I think I might have a couple other smaller items going up. Okay, cool. 
And I will have the band also next week, uh, um, the Turbo, as well as the uh, Yoga 3 Pro uh, that came in. So I'm going to use that and see how well it handles. It, it was a fanless um, laptop when I first saw it. It now has a fan built in. Um, mm -hmm. Just to adjust mm. to some of the heat issues uh, that some people have been uh, put, stating, so we'll see how it handles in terms of uh, work and functionality. But kind um, of defeats the purpose. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It does. Uh, I think also maybe just because the way the enclosure is, because they actually had no vents the first time we saw it, none mm. at all. So that might that's my might be one of the things that killed them. And probably they just decide, look, people are going to do more work. Let's just throw a fan on top. <laughs> just to be safe, yeah. So anyway, um, that's it, guys. Thank you very much for joining uh, episode 53 and a half of the weekly <laughs> um, since the Hangout got cut off. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to all the channels, uh, Board at Work, as well as Some Gadget Guy and BW1 uh, on YouTube. Uh, you can check us out there as well as all our social networks. Thank you very much, and always enjoy your entertainment. Bam.